Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to look at OpenSynchore. So I'm going to open this. I've made a first tutorial which talks about the navigation. So I've already talked about the stylus here, the toolbar, and the menu to navigate. Uh, now, what I'd like to show you is some are some of the features of OpenSynchore. So I'm going to start by showing you how to bring your documents into OpenSynchore. So if you've opened this in your classroom, you need to open some of your files. So let's have a look at this. Um, we can go to documents and it will ask me well, where where are your documents so let's have a look at this we, these are my previous open sync core documents that I've not saved so I can actually open this or I can actually import something uh, such as a PowerPoint or a word file so I'll click on import and as you've noticed there is the export button here as well so you can export to sync core format format so you can save anything that you've done today and export it into the same format so you can open it again in another classroom or in the next lesson or you could publish it to the web I would suggest you export it to a PDF document so that anything that you show your learners in the lesson you can save that as a PDF and put it onto Moodle or send it to the learners so they can access that because remember the learners are not going to have OpenSync or downloaded onto their laptops at home uh, unless they've actually gone onto the internet and downloaded a copy the chances are they won't have a uh, open sync call so the the best format to save it in is PDF now I'm going to show you how to bring something into open sync call so let's have a look at documents um, okay I've got MacBook Pro users guide let's have a look at mm, okay I will just select something. I'll just look at this MacBook Pro user's guide. Let's see what format this opens in because um, it's from my MacBook. So it's not a Word document or a PowerPoint. So that's just loading right now and it's installing all the pages from my MacBook Pro. <laughs> While it's, oh yeah, it's done. So there, it's saying that all of your pages have been installed. So let's have a look at this. Um, open in board and let's have a look at this let's go to the board now here should be a list of all of the slides that I've got so it brings your document into a slide format so you can go slide by slide and go through any of the bits that you'd like to go through with your learners so let's say you're looking at this and you want to highlight a particular topic you can say make sure you read this chapter in the textbook for example uh, and then go through it that way so you can write on the documents and save them so the way that you would save your file so you've just learned how to bring a file in and the way that you'd save a file is by clicking on um, documents and export so you can rename the file export to PDF so you can take this information and put it into your documents and save it so you can do that but what I'd like to show you is I'd got, like to go back to the board and show you a couple of other features as well so you know how to save a file um, I'd like to add a few other things so let's say I want to add a couple of slides here just taking its time so I've added two three slides there now what I can do is put anything that I want to from the menu into here so let's have a look um, pictures you've got different objects here so let's say I want to put this item I can put that so that's something that you can import into open Circle. so you can put images there was an icon if I can find it that I thought was really really useful actually and it's a timer and I'm just looking for that right now. Miniature, add to page. Yeah, that's it. So there's the timer option that I've just imported into OpenSync Core. And what's really, really useful is if you've got a lesson and you've got an activity, what you can do is time it so that um, you've got the hour, the minute, and you've got the second. So let's say I've put it to a couple of seconds from now and I click play. So if you've got a timed activity with your learners, you can use this with them and when it's ready 
it will make a beep sound so that you can say okay end of activity now so you can import this onto any slide where there's an activity so, and leave it there and then set it to the timer that you want and hit play and you can refresh it again if you want them to do the activity again and then start over uh, so you can do that so that's quite useful uh, you've got lots of icons here that you can explore so one of them let's have a look is uh, actually not this one um, Interactivities. Interactivities are very interesting because they're exciting games that you can use with your learners. So if we have a look at this one, for example, choisir, which means uh, choice activity. They are in French, but a lot of them are self-explanatory, so you can go through this. So you can actually type in the question, uh, and you can edit the, the size of your question to make the board uh, user-friendly. So you can stick in question one here. This is an example of the question, so it will allow you to edit that by clicking edit here. So you can write down what your question is there and stick in the, the answer that you, you want to give for multiple choices. You can add another answer as well, add one possible answer, um, and then you can indicate which is the correct answer by clicking on the X. So if you want to change that around, that will be possible. So let's let's have a look at editing this so we've chosen different themes here so slate okay let's choose the slate theme okay question okay I'm going to choose a very elementary question yes no unsure and the correct answer is yes so let's have a look at this options you can choose a display option so let's have a look. It's saying the right answer only and the possibilities are displayed as radio buttons. Several right answers and possibilities are displayed as check boxes. So you could have uh, select all the answers that apply. Uh, one right answer only and the possibilities are displayed as a pull down menu, which is also a, a useful option as well. So I will leave it at this. So you can create quite a lot of questions actually. So that was question one. You can add another question, add a new question. So you can actually create a little quiz um, on your desktop. So let's have a look at this. Uh, close. So I've got the question that I want. Is it snowing today? Um, delete questions, options, reload. So it will look like this. And you can edit your slate. So I'm going to collect some... Uh, select an answer no it's saying no it's red so it will highlight which answer is incorrect so let's try and choose another answer because saying that one's incorrect as well when you highlight the correct answer it will give you a color coded um, message so this will show you straight away that that's incorrect so if you did uh, a number of questions with your learners straight away it's very visual you can actually see what's correct and what's incorrect so that's a way that you can choose an activity so I'll bring this back again so the way that I got to that was interactivities and you can go down and look at the different activities you've got matching activities as well so and you've got numbering activities sorting activities there the possibilities are quite endless actually so there's lots of different things that you can choose um, so you'll have to have a play around with that now so we've looked at so far how to use some of the interactive features how to import features into OpenSync Core um, we've looked at how to uh, add more slides, how to import your document. So let's say you want to do something else. Let's have a look at what else we can do. You can actually hit podcast and if you were to record something, it brings up this, if you wanted to record something, it brings up this little icon here. Now I'll put this in the middle there so you can see it clearly. It's not started recording yet because it's just brought up the, the information and it says do you want audio or not so built-in input and let's have a look at this uh, small medium full do I want to publish to the intranet of your college or do you want to publish it to YouTube so you can select what you want to publish something to and I'm going to hit record and now it started recording me so let's say I'm demonstrating how to use the stopwatch Okay, and I've also looked at this, so I'm just going to stop this recording here to show you what that looks like. So that's 16 seconds that have been recorded by default. And if this is correct, let me go to OpenSync Call, hide OpenSync Call. It should automatically 
go onto my desktop and I can see, yeah, there's something there. So let me play this to see if it worked. Okay. Board. And now it started recording me. So let's say I'm demonstrating how to use the stopwatch. Okay, so basically that's quite useful. It's um, it's recorded the sound and it's recorded what I was doing and I'll go back to OpenSynchro. So you can actually take that document and put it onto Moodle as well. So that's quite useful and that's something that's uh, quite handy, especially if you want your learners to catch up on something if they've not been present in the class. So I'm going to finish my tutorial now and that's the end of the tutorial for today.